Hey guys, welcome back to our 10 part mini series on MA2 bits on macros. And in this series, I'm showing you one video at a time, uh, all and everything that you need to know about macros pretty much. I double checked with the manual. This is pretty much everything that the manual teaches you about macros, which I'm going to show you in this series. So today, to quote or not to quote, this is a little bit of a tricky thing. I actually had to write the MA2 support about this because one of my macros wasn't working the way I expected it. And um, they were incredibly nice and helpful. Uh, so thank you to Lars from the support for that and help me out. So today I'm able to bring you this video in part courtesy of the MA2 support. Thanks for that. All right, so to quote or not to quote, let's start with user input from uh, last the last video and what I want to do is I want to label a macro so I'm just gonna go label macro new label and this will be the dummy version without any user input so if I execute this ooh, of course it doesn't exist all right label macro it's 22 So again, this is the dummy version, just to show you what I want to do. I want to label macro 22 with a label. And as we learn in trait number two, what we can do is we can use parentheses to ask the user for input. So in this case, which macro? And then enter new. So let's see if that works, which macro 22, and then enter new label, new label. And now this is where something weird is happening because all of a sudden it asks us for a new label, even though we just entered one, right? And also if we look down here, we can see label macro 22 new show. That's not what we wanted. All right, so you can see also by the green color that it recognized our attempt at a new label um, as two um, keywords actually. So that's not the outcome we wanted. So this is where we have to use quotes. Whenever you have um, a value that you ask from the user that represents a label or a name for a queue for, for a sequence or maybe the info field inside of a sequence. Whenever you have something like that, um, you're basically dealing with text that is not supposed to be interpreted as commands. And in that case, what you want to do is surround the, the text inside of the parentheses for the user input box with these double quotes that you're just seeing now on the screen. So let's test that macro out again. I want to relabel macro 22. And then new label, name will be hello new label. And now it works because you can see here that we see these quotation marks and then the new label in between them. And that's exactly what we wanted. All the, all the words are white, which means that it didn't interpret those as a keyword. Now where it gets a little tricky and that's where I had to write in the, um, to the support is when we are dealing with variables. So let's see. That wasn't even part of this. All right, we're gonna do a little special here. Even though I didn't show you variables yet, I'm gonna show you variables. So just in case you know variables already, um, so if we're storing the new, um, if we're storing the, the macro number and the new label inside of variables, then something special happens. That's where it gets tricky.
Because now we go. Macro number. And new label. What you will see is that it won't work. So we go macro 22. This is a new label. So now something weird happens. So even though you can see here that the quotation marks were used to set this variable, um, when we tried to use it, again, our label was interpreted as um, a command sequence. So that's not good. Um, and that's where the support helped me out because this is the second time that you need quotes if you use something which you want to interpret as text which is stored inside of a variable then you have to put the variable name inside of quotes just like that and now all of a sudden macro 22 this is a new label now all of this sudden it works because you see here um, when we assign the value to the variable it uses um, these quotation marks and doesn't interpret it and now it also doesn't interpret it when it uses this value so that's the thing um, about quotation marks whenever you have input that is supposed to be just a name or text in general then you always need to put quotation marks um, around the text in your parentheses, which is your user input. And also secondly, if you want to use what's stored inside of a variable, and we're gonna get to variables in the next video, um, when you want to use that as a text, then you also need to wrap the variable name in quotes, just like that. And that's quoting for you. It's a little tricky um, at first maybe, but once you get the hang of it, it actually is not that hard. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to download the show file in the comments of this video to try it all out for yourself. And uh, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.